If you want to lose the weight for the last time, visit myphdweightloss.com. Glad to have you joining me today in the PhD Weight Loss and Nutrition Studio. Appreciate you spending a few minutes of your morning with us in today's edition of Just the Truth. Breaking news yesterday afternoon, Senate Democrats quickly squashed impeachment charges against Department of Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas, a swift end to the GOP's attempt to oust him. Senator John Kennedy from Louisiana wants to know why the DOJ let the statute of limitations run out on Hunter Biden's failure to pay taxes. Attorney General Merrick Garland had the opportunity to answer the question yesterday during the Senate hearing. We have that exchange for you. A man's been accused of transporting millions of dollars worth of stolen merchandise from Augusta National, home of the prestigious Masters Golf Tournament, of course, according to court documents. It's quite an interesting case. Evidently, it's been going on for a number of years now. And parents of Covenant school shooting victims are begging the judge not to release shooter Audrey Hale's manifesto. We have the details on that court case as well. 864-477-JOEY, 864-477-5639. Your comments are welcome on the Firm of Four text line. You can leave a voice message. Also, your emails are always welcome, joey at joeyhudson.com. I told you we'd be back. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. It's Joey Hudson. I wanted to name it the Joey Hudson Bill, but, you know, they don't allow you to name put names on bills, <laughs> but I wanted to call it the Joey Hudson Bill because I know, I know that one's been near and dear to you for a number of years. That's how it's done. Let your voice be heard. And the truth shall set you free. Here's Joey Hudson. Let's just jump right in. Senate Democrats yesterday quickly squashed impeachment charges against Department of Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas, a swift end to the GOP's attempt to remove him from office. Why does this matter? Well, killing the charges without a full trial highlights how Democrats saw the impeachment as political theater, but Republicans argue that it sets a very dangerous precedent to not move forward and at least have the trial, have the process. Here's, uh, here's the exchange today. Information of yep. members, there are no further votes today. Now I remind all members that we have very serious business ahead of us um, in the next few days and we'll keep you informed as to schedule as things can get scheduled. Republican leader is recognized. The Senate will be in order. Would senators Madam, please take their conversations to the cloak? Madam President, we've set a very unfortunate precedent here. This means that the Senate can ignore, in effect, the House's impeachment. It doesn't make any difference whether our friends on the other side thought he should have been impeached or not. He was. And by doing what we just did, we have, in effect, ignored the directions of the House, which were to have a trial. We had no evidence, no procedure. This is a day that's not a proud day in the history of the Senate. So here's what happened yesterday. Senators voted along party lines to rule the articles of impeachment unconstitutional for not meeting the standard of high crimes and misdemeanors. Senator Lisa Murkowski, the Republican from Alaska, voted present on the first article rather than joining with the rest of her Republican colleagues who voted against the article being unconstitutional. Both impeachment articles were declared unconstitutional by a vote of 51 to 48 for the first charge and 51 to 49 on the second. Republicans warned that vulnerable Senate Democrats would be punished in the upcoming November general election for their votes to kill the impeachment trial before their Ever was really a trial of Department of Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas. A Republican Conference Chairman John Barrasso from Wyoming said every Democrat will pay a heavy price in November for willfully refusing to end this border crisis. This was in a statement following the impeachment trial proceedings. Republicans have made border, uh, border security and immigration one of their top campaign issues this year, and dismissing the impeachment effort was probably a pretty tough vote for some Democrats who are facing competitive races to keep their seats in November. Uh, The House made Mayorkas the first cabinet official to be impeached in over 150 years. 
The impeachment articles charged Mayorkas with breach of public trust and failing to uphold U.S. laws. But Democrats argued that Mayorkas was impeached because of policy disputes and not any high crimes or misdemeanors. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer proposed points of order after senators were sworn in as jurors to deem both of the House passed articles uh, of impeachment unconstitutional, as you heard him uh, in that clip I just played for you. Votes on the points of order were along party lines. Again, all Democrats agreeing that both articles were unconstitutional. This included five of those most vulnerable Democrat incumbents, Senators Tammy Baldwin from Wisconsin, John Tester from Montana, Sherrod Brown from Ohio, Bob Casey from Pennsylvania, and Jackie Rosen from Nevada. House Republican leaders in a joint statement with, uh, with the Speaker of the House said, the American people will hold Senate Democrats accountable for this shameful display. History will not be forgiving of Democrats' decisions to table this hearing, echoed Senator Roger Marshall from Kansas. In a statement, he said the American people will hold Mayorkas accountable at the ballot box this November. Uh, others commenting on this, Senator John Cornyn of Texas additionally slammed his Democrat counterparts for disregarding their duty to the American people. In his own statement following the decision to vote in line with his party, Tester said Montanans want real solutions that secure the border, not partisan games from D.C. politicians. Yeah, these are partisan games now. Wonder how he felt about impeaching Donald Trump a couple of times. Those weren't uh, partisan games, I guess. He urged President Biden and Secretary Mayorkas to use their remaining executive authorities to help secure our border, he said, and asked his colleagues in the Senate to revisit the bipartisan border package that was abandoned following former President Donald Trump's public disapproval. Tester's race is considered one of the most competitive races in the country as we head towards November. National Republican Senatorial Committee spokesperson Tate Mitchell said in a statement, Senate Democrats just showed voters they will do nothing to hold Joe Biden and DH Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas accountable for the disastrous border policies that have caused this crisis. Throughout the Senate's history, charges and trials have only ever been dismissed when the impeached individual had resigned or was otherwise no longer in office. Let me repeat that. Throughout the Senate's history, what happened yesterday with the charges being dismissed without even being considered have never happened except when the individual had already resigned and was not in office. And that's the dangerous precedent that Minority Leader Mitch McConnell was talking about, that the House thought it was serious enough to vote on the articles of impeachment. That's the first step in the process. So now it's, it's time for a trial. It's time for the Senate to do their job. In effect, what happened yesterday, it would be like the judge is throwing a case out of the court before the jury has a chance to even hear the case. Cornyn noted that the precedent set is unfortunate and part of the Democrats' larger effort to sweep the Biden administration's failing border policies under the rug. Senator Josh Hawley said in 2020, Dems voted to impeach Trump without even charging a crime. Today, they voted that a felony cannot be an impeachable crime. It's beyond absurd. And he's right. It is. Uh, While Republicans denounced the proceedings that unfolded on the Senate floor yesterday, President Biden's administration were rejoicing, celebrating. Uh, Mia Ehrenberg, DHS spokesperson in a statement, said today's decision by the Senate to reject House Republicans' baseless attacks on Secretary Mayorkas proves definitively that there was no evidence or constitutional grounds to justify impeachment. Well, ma'am, no, that does not. (laughs) What it proves is that we we had a vote down party lines yesterday. It does not prove that your secretary, your boss, is not guilty. Look at the border. Look at what the fiasco, the chaos at our border. And you, sh- you should have enough sense to know that, yes, we have a problem and that your boss is not doing his job. 
Ian Sams, White House spokesperson for oversight and investigations, added in his own statement, once and for all, the Senate has rightly voted down his baseless impeachment that even conservative legal scholars said was unconstitutional. He also noted that Biden and Mayorkas would continue doing their jobs to keep America safe and pursue actual solutions at the border. Well, where are those solutions? When he says they'll continue doing their job, they haven't been doing their job. Maybe he should have said they'll start doing their job. Maybe they'll start closing our border. Maybe they'll start protecting the American people. Are the GOP senators right here? Will the American people really remember this in November and punish the Democrat senators who ignored the problems at the border and the lack of response by Secretary Mayorkas? Maybe the better question is, do you think Mayorkas should have even been impeached by the House to begin with? Your comments are welcome on the Furman Ford text line. 864-477-JOEY, 864-477-5639. Was this just partisan politics from the beginning? I don't think so. Because we know that Mayorkas is not doing his job, just like Joe Biden's not doing his job. But for them to not even consider it, not even have the trial in the Senate. Now, it'd be another thing if they had had the trial, if they'd heard the testimony, and then they had voted this way, which you would probably expect most Democrats to. But to not even allow the trial to happen, to go through these parliamentary maneuvers and just let it die before anyone has a chance to have their say in this, that that was just wrong. 864 5639. Uh, am, I, am I off track here today? Or you agree? Senator John Kennedy from Louisiana wants to know why the DOJ let the statute of limitations run out on Hunter Biden's failure to pay taxes case. Attorney General Merrick Garland had the opportunity to answer that question yesterday during a Senate hearing. I have that exchange for you in just a moment. First, I want to talk about your weight. I know it's kind of personal, but you've been feeling kind of heavy, haven't you? Your clothes aren't fitting you quite as well as they should. I've been sharing with you for almost four years now my journey and my success with Ph.D. weight loss and nutrition. I'm just so fortunate that almost four years ago I was introduced to Dr. Ashley Lucas and her team at Ph.D. weight loss and nutrition. In my case, it was at the Greenville office. They have offices in Asheville. Charlotte and Lake Norman. And if you're anywhere in the world, you can still do this program virtually by calling 864-252-4925. Go ahead and call and set up your first consultation today. If you're thinking about this, or maybe you've been hearing me talk about it and you're kind of on the fence, you haven't made a decision. Well, let's go ahead and get going. Let's, let's get started because summer's going to be here soon. You'll feel so much better out on the beach in that swimsuit with that excess weight gone. Call 864-252-4925. What I love about PhD weight loss nutrition is it's not a diet. It's not one of these fad diets where you lose the weight and then they just kind of leave you on, on your own and you gain it all back. PhD weight loss nutrition is based on the science of nutrition. That's what Dr. Ashley Lucas teaches you about your relationship with food, what to eat, when to eat, and how to eat. And once you lose that weight, you're going to have the tools to be able to keep it off. Call today, 864-252-4925, or visit them online at myphdweightloss.com. PhD Weight Loss and Nutrition, the official partner of the Clemson Tigers. Republican Louisiana Senator John Kennedy yesterday questioned Attorney General Merrick Garland on why the Department of Justice allowed the statute of limitations to expire on Hunter Biden's alleged tax crimes. Biden appointed U.S. Attorney Matthew Graves of the District of Columbia decided not to partner with Special Counsel David Weiss uh, on the Hunter Biden case, leading to the statute of limitations expiring for potential tax charges in D.C. related to the president's son's income 
from the Ukrainian energy firm, Burisma, where he was paid millions of dollars for sitting on the board of a company he knew nothing about. Kennedy accused the president's son of various tax crimes and asked the attorney general why the DOJ enabled enough time to pass to where Hunter Biden could not be prosecuted. Here's the exchange. Mr. Hunter Biden did not pay taxes on $1 million in 2014 and 2015. And he deducted payments from his income tax for personal expenses when he did file. For hookers, for a Lamborghini, for strip clubs, for sex clubs, for porn website memberships. Why did the Department of Justice let the statute of limitations run? As you well know, Senator. So you can't prosecute? As you well know, Senator, that investigation is being conducted by um, uh, Mr. Weiss, who was appointed by President Trump uh, to be the U.S. Attorney in Delaware. Much of the investigation you're talking about occurred during the previous administration under Mr. Weiss. Mr. Weiss has continued um, his investigations. It's now a special counsel. He will issue a report which so are will you explain saying it's Trump's po- fault? Which will explain... No, I, I don't know whether there's a fault or not. Mr. Weiss will explain this in his report. But we can't... Mr. Hunter Biden walks free on not paying taxes on a million bucks from 2014 and 15 because the Department of Justice let it happen, right? I'm, again, I'm not going to comment on decisions made um, in, uh, in a pending investigation. In the end, Mr. Weiss will issue a report. I will provide the report to Congress. You will be able to question Mr. Weiss as to his reasoning, and he will be able to defend his reasoning. Would you come with Mr. Weiss when he does that? I'm not going to know the uh, intricacies of Mr. Weiss's investigation. There would be no point. Uh, it's Mr. Weiss who's responsible for this investigation. But you were head of the Department of Justice. Yes, and I've appointed him as special counsel so that he can independently investigate this matter. Yeah, and somewhere along the way, enough time elapsed to where Hunter Biden will not be able to be held responsible for some of the more serious crimes that he committed. Kennedy accused the DOJ of allowing Hunter to be a free man despite allegedly committing a crime, he said. Again, I'm not going to comment on decisions made in pending investigations, the AG said. In the end, the special counsel will issue a report. Well, again, it's too late. So he'll he'll issue a report. But we know nothing's going to happen in the tax case, which could have had some of the more serious ramifications for Hunter Biden. Kennedy asked Garland if he would accompany Weiss to testimony, but the attorney general said that would be pointless. A man has been accused of transporting millions of dollars worth of stolen merchandise from Augusta National, home of the prestigious Masters Golf Tournament, according to court documents. This is uh, kind of intriguing, an interesting case. I'll give you those details after I talk with you about that new vehicle that you're looking for. Are you looking for a new car for the family? Maybe a new SUV? Or maybe you need a new pickup truck uh, for, for, your, for your work. A new Ford F-150. You'd look good driving that around. It's never been more important, I believe, to support locally run businesses owned by people who actually live here in the upstate. We have so many of these large dealerships that are owned by corporations in another state now. When you go to Furman Ford in Lawrence, you're going to have the chance to talk with Matthew Furman, with Jim Furman. Their name is on the sign because their name is on the line with every single transaction that takes place. Whether you purchase a vehicle from them, a new one, or one of their uh, great selections of pre-owned vehicles, or they service your existing vehicle because uh, if you need service, you're not going to have to wait weeks and weeks and weeks to get on the schedule. They'll they'll be able to get you in there. And here's here's a couple things you need to understand doesn't matter if your vehicle is a Ford or not. They service all makes and models, and you do not have had to purchase your vehicle there either. They'll service your vehicle regardless of where you purchased it. And the best thing about it, when you buy a new vehicle or a pre-owned vehicle or you get, get your vehicle serviced there, you know that when you leave that lot, your money is staying right there in the community. 
It's not going to be sent back to some corporate headquarters. Let me encourage you to visit my friends at Furman Ford in Lawrence. Find them online at FurmanFord.com, FurmanFord.com. Richard Brendan Globinski has been charged with knowingly transporting items from the iconic annual Masters Tournament at the Augusta National Golf Club to his home in Tampa, Florida, knowing that they had been stolen, converted, and taken by fraud according to to the uh, charging document that was obtained by media outlets. Globinski has been accused of moving millions of dollars worth of Masters Golf Tournament merchandise and historical memorabilia approximately between 2009 and 2022 in a court in the Northern District of Illinois, Eastern Division, uh, the document reads. Now, boy, that went on for a long time, 2009 to 2022. If the prosecution is successful, the accused would be liable for refunding any losses allegedly suffered and would lose the rights to any proceeds related to the alleged offense, according to the document. Klobinski is a 39-year-old former employee of Augusta National Golf Club, according to the Chicago Tribune. It's reportedly not known what specific items were taken, uh, but uh, they have been stolen and have been trafficked, um, been been sold, I would imagine, on uh, various sites where you can buy sports memorabilia. The Masters Tournament is probably one of the biggest, most prestigious of all of golf's major championships. Memorabilia associated with, associated with the Masters is very much sought after by fans. And look, Augusta National Golf Club, they're famous for guarding their brand aggressively. Uh, they sell a number of items on-site only because of this to protect the brand. Augusta National sued in an effort to prevent their iconic green jackets awarded to winners of the Masters from being sold at auction back in 2017, according to the Associated Press. The club reportedly allows these jackets to leave its grounds only for one year before being returned as they remain property of the club. So if I'm understanding this, so like when Scotty Scheffler received his green jacket this past week for winning it, he gets to keep it for a year, but he has to bring it back when he comes back next year. Um, again, they have not released what exactly this, uh, this global, uh, global Skinsky took, but, um, if it was worth millions of dollars, must've been a lot. We saw this coming, didn't we? A Walmart near St. Louis, Missouri is ditching their self checkout lanes this past weekend. The Walmart store in Shrewsbury, Missouri, began removing self-checkout lanes, according to local KMOV. Walmart said the move is to help improve the store's shopping experience. The self-checkout lanes will be replaced with staffed checkouts. The changeover at this store is expected to take around two weeks to complete, they said. Some of the biggest retailers have recently been re-evaluating their self-checkout lanes. You know, self-checkout lanes were became a real fad. I mean, they were up, popping up in all the major retailers, even in places like Lowe's. I mean, I went, I went to my favorite Lowe's not long ago and they're in the, in the regular checkout section. There's not a single man at checkout booth there, period. I have to go over to the pro section if I want some help with it, with the checkout item. Uh, according to this report back in March, Target stores nationwide began limiting their self-out, self-checkout lanes to 10 items or less to accommodate customers shopping for larger uh, items. Target said it's staffing more traditional checkout lanes with human cashiers. Also last month, Dollar General said it was removing self-checkouts from 300 of its stores that have some of the highest levels of shoplifting. In other Dollar General stores, self-checkouts will be limited to customers with five items or fewer. Retailers said that self-checkout lanes make theft easier since no employee is ringing up the items people buy. Uh, duh. <laughs> we could have told them that, couldn't we? When this whole fad started, I, I, I knew it would never last. Now, to, to be honest, there are times that I like the self-checkout. If I have just a few items and I can get through it uh, more quickly, that's great. 
But there are other times when I have a lot of items or maybe items that, uh, that maybe the price, I'm not sure about the price on the item. Well, you need a clerk. You need some, a, a live person helping you. On the Furman Ford text line, Susan writes, I've got an LED bulb that's been burning nonstop for 10 years. I hate those spiral compact fluorescent bulbs because they contain mercury and last no longer than incandescent bulbs. This is in relationship to, uh, to a story I've talked with you about in yesterday's episode where the Biden administration has introduced additional regulations. You know, they haven't, they haven't found the regulation they don't like yet. And the way they are changing the way we shop is by regulation. One of the latest is that uh, soon, and and actually now, it's hard to find anything but LED light bulbs. But now they're forcing the manufacturers of the LED light bulbs to to make them even more energy conscious, which is going to drive the price up of the bulbs. And, and even though they last much longer, <laughs> some of us, like me, won't live long enough to, to, to uh, experience the savings. Uh, Texture Faye says, Joey, I don't know which uh, riles me more, Mayorkas being given a free pass or those shouting death to America. Try that stunt in Iran and see what it gets you. Anyone who's not happy here, well, buy a one-way ticket out of here. I agree with you. They let them go someplace else if they don't like living here. Jeff writes on the Furman Ford tax line, that's one of the best numbers I've ever heard to have that much of an increase of people coming to Jesus is just wonderful. Uh, Jeff is referencing, I told you uh, again in yesterday's episode, about Peg and I going to the annual fundraiser for the Carolina Pregnancy Center in Spartanburg. And boy, what a magnificent job. Alexa Newman and her staff are doing over there, getting ready to move into their brand new building. And, uh, and, but, but I told you about one of the most impressive numbers that they shared with us. Yes, their, their, uh, fundraising was up and uh, they shared a lot of numbers. The, the number of people they served were up, but also the number of people who came to find Jesus Christ through their program, that number was up by 113%. That's what Jeff is referencing, and boy, that's something to celebrate. Um, again, go to carolinapregnancy.org, carolinapregnancy.org, if you want to help this wonderful organization. Also, Jeff uh, asked a question, was I the only one that wanted to do the Bible Truth Daily? Well, no, Jeff, you, you actually, I, I got a lot of good feedback on that. I just sometimes think that I'm running out of time, So, but if you want it, we'll, we'll do it. Uh, Our text of encouragement today uh, from Joel, he says, choosing to be positive and having a grateful attitude is going to determine how you're going to live your life. God bless, and that is so true, uh, so true. Thank you for that uh, comment. Your comments are welcome on the Furman Ford text line as well, 864-477-JOEY, 864-477-5639. So Jeff Jeff wants uh, us to start doing a, a Bible truth of the day each day so we'll we'll try to do that uh today's is from my favorite one of my favorite little books called the god shot the scripture is from second peter chapter one three through four his divine power has granted to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us to his own glory and excellence by which he was granted to us his precious and very great promises so that through them you may become partakers of the divine nature having escaped from the corruption that is in the world because of sinful desire. Uh, she goes on to write, and this book is written by Tara Lee Cobble, by the way. She, uh, she's the author and has a great podcast called the Bible Recap Podcast, one of the most popular podcasts uh, on faith and religion uh, on Apple um, Podcast. She writes, Did you know that you have all that you need to live a godly life? If you know Jesus, then you have his spirit living in you, equipping you with everything you need to love and to honor God. How comforting to know that we're not left to do this in our own strength. He does the doing, and he does it for his own glory and excellence. By his divine nature, our sinful nature is being transformed day by day. And someday when Jesus returns, 
We'll live in resurrection bodies like his, and all his precious and great, great promises will be fulfilled. All of these gifts are things that we don't deserve, of course. All of this is evidence of his grace being poured out in our lives, multiplied to us. We could never earn these things. They're the exclusive blessings of being his kids, being adopted into his family through no effort of our own. Today, think about the immense gift that he's given you by calling you his child. Revel in the blessings of his gifts to you, and as you delight in him, may your smile and your gentleness point others to him as well. He's where the joy is. And yes, Jeff, I appreciate you encouraging us to uh, to do that daily. If you have a special passage or maybe you have a a, um, a a God shot that you'd like to share with us, send it to the Furman Ford text line, 864-477-5639. Parents of the Covenant school shooting victims are begging the judge not to release shooter Audrey Hale's manifesto. Details on that in just a moment. Portions of the day show brought to you by Discounted Appliance Warehouse. DAWPickens.com is where you can find them online or just take the short drive over to Pickens because if you're tired of buying appliances from the inexperienced sales staff who have no appliance knowledge, you walk into one of the big box stores and you ask them about the refrigerators and the only thing they know about a refrigerator is which aisle that it's on, you know the frustration that you can have because there's so many options, so many brands, so many features, and appliances are not inexpensive. You can't afford to not get this right. Discounted Appliance Warehouse, they're who I recommend. They're who I, they're who I buy all of my appliances from. They have an A-plus Better Business Bureau, nearly perfect reviews on Google, and the team at Discounted Appliance Warehouse, they have the knowledge that you need to have the confidence in your purchase, to make, make sure that you feel good about what you're buying, what you're spending your hard-earned dollars on. They'll show you around their warehouse. They have over 11,000 square feet. At any given time, about 1,500 appliances for you to choose from. You can buy it today, and in a lot of cases, use it today as well. Their award-winning service department will make sure that they take care of you well beyond the sale as well. And Discounted Appliance Warehouse, they're proud to offer Speed Queen the only washers and dryers with up to a seven-year warranty on parts and labor. Again, find my friends at DAWPickens.com, DAWPickens.com. Parents of the victims of the uh, 2023's Covenant school shooting begged a judge not to release the killer's manifesto at a hearing in Nashville this week. Transgender Audrey Hale killed three children, three adults at her former school in March of last year before being shot by police. The 28-year-old left behind at least 20 journals, a suicide note, and an unpublished memoir, which the school and associated church have made a huge effort to prevent from being released. Media companies and free speech advocates are suing to make make Hale's writings public, citing the public's right to know what motivated the shooting. At the second day of the hearings yesterday, The court heard from victims' families. One written affidavit presented in court implored Judge uh, Miles to bar the release of the writings. Aaron Kenning, whose nine-year-old son, William, was killed by uh, Hale, said, I will not stand by to allow these shooters' writings to be published in any way. This mass murderer doesn't get to speak from the grave. I find my heart heavier with grief than I could ever imagine. I must live through every single hour that my child is gone from this world. Despite this immense pain, I implore you to serve what little justice you can. Free speech attorneys are arguing for the manifesto's release have previously addressed parents' statements, pointing out that while they may be traumatized, the matter should not be decided by them, according to these free speech advocates. Rob Harvey, represents the Tennessean media outlet, pointed out that the parents were not actually the victims of the crime, saying what happened that day is a tragedy, but it doesn't mean that everyone at the school is a victim. Wow. I'm not quite sure how I feel about the release of of these. I, I, I get the point that some of these media outlets would like to get their hands on on these documents. There's even some of the police agencies 
who believe they should be released as well. But I can certainly, well, I actually can't understand how this father feels because I've never been in his shoes. But for, for this guy to say that the parents were not the victims that day, I think I could have chosen a little better way to, uh, to have tried to express myself because uh, those parents were victims as well. He's wrong on that. The parents were added to this lawsuit back in December after a Tennessee Court of Appeals ruled that they could be a part of it. Lawyers also argued this week that they, that they own, the parents own, the copyright to the writings because Hale's family turned over the estate to the victim's family after the incident. Eric Osborne, who's an attorney for the family, said, Imagine us going to Taylor Swift's residence and they collect Miss Swift's writings and found 10 new songs. The families, uh, we're in the same position as Miss Swift. This is copyright and shouldn't be public. Judge Miles didn't seem to be impressed with this, though. Uh, he wasn't too keen or didn't appear to be too keen on the copyright argument, saying that everything written down is not automatically copyrighted. This might be a federal court issue, but if everything written is copyrighted, then nothing can be public record, the judge said. As at the uh, previous day's hearing, attorney Doug Pierce, who represents the National Police Association, argued that the families of the victims do not have copyrightable interest in the writings and that public interest outweighs the family's wishes. Again, that's one of the police organizations who believes that these should be made public. Other parties suing for the Covenant Shooter's writings to be made public include the Tennessean, the Tennessee Star, the Tennessee Firearms Association, and Senator Todd Gardenhire. Additionally, more than 60 members of the Tennessee House Republican Caucus signed a letter last year calling for Metro Nashville Police to release the manifesto. A third argument that's been put forward is that releasing the manifesto could pose a security risk to the Covenant School, which has inserted itself into the legal arguments at every turn. Rockland King, an attorney for the school, said a shooter is motivated by fame and notoriety, by publishing their writings and thoughts. By providing those thoughts a platform, you're providing the notoriety and fame. By doing that, it's a real threat. Others will engage in a copycat behavior. These are 6- to 7-year-olds, and at most 18-year-old, King continued, these children cannot protect themselves. The General Assembly said to you that if it's related to school security, you shall not disclose it. At the previous day's hearing, Pierce had explained that the burden of proof is on those trying to suppress the documents from being released rather than those seeking it and pointing out that the strong general rule is information is available to the public in most cases. Pierce also said the argument for copycat killers is weak, and studies have shown that the window in which such actions take place is very short, meaning that if there was going to be a copycat, in this case, it probably would have already taken place. At the end of court yesterday, Judge Miles acknowledged that the release of the manifesto was a complex issue, saying you have placed a heavy burden on me. It's not something I take lightly. My heart breaks for the families in the case. I am a solicitor, but I'm also a human, and as a human, I offer my condolences to the families who have been affected by this tragedy. It's not clear when Judge Miles will issue a ruling, but... Um, asked by lawyers for additional written arguments, uh, or, or the judge asked for additional arguments by, from, the, uh, uh, from the lawyers. She gave them a seven-day deadline to file those, those additional briefs. Miles will likely rule after uh, the court has had a chance to review the documents. Both sides have vowed to appeal the ruling if it doesn't go their way, meaning the issue is unlikely to be, to be resolved anytime soon. That's a, that's a tough one. Because I can see why those families do not want these documents to be published. I get that. Love to get your comments. What do you think? Should 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 these uh, these documents should the manifesto be released to the public? Are, are you in, are you on the side of free speech here, or do you think the parents are right, the families are right, the school is right? that this would only encourage potentially other shooters to do the same thing, to, to write a manifesto, go to a school or to a public area, 
and kill some people to, to gain the notoriety. It takes a real sick mind to think like that. That's it for today's edition of Just the Truth. Appreciate you joining me in the PhD Weight Loss and Nutrition Studio. To lose weight for the last time, visit myphdweightloss.com. Hey, please join my mailing list. Go to joeyhudson.com. Click on the Connect with Joey button so that you can receive our emails with the most up-to-date news. Also, find me on YouTube. Just search for Joey Hudson. Appreciate you spending a few minutes of your day with me. Keep those comments coming via the Furman Ford text line, 864-477-JOEY, 864-477-5639. Love to hear some of your thoughts on some of our topics today, particularly about this school release of these documents. I'd love to get your your comments on that on the Furman Ford text line. Keep those emails coming too, joey at joeyhudson.com. And be sure and share today's episode with someone. We, uh, I, I depend on you to help me recruit new listeners to Just the Truth. You know, I I, uh, I was so grateful at the, I mentioned earlier, the Carolina Pregnancy, Pregnancy Center and what a great job Alexa Newman and her staff are doing over there. I'm just so proud of their work. Um, but she was talking in her final remarks at the other night's gala, and she talked about this, this fight that we have to continue for life. Yes, Roe v. Wade, uh, that is done. Now the hard part uh, starts, and and this is where organizations like hers come into play. But but in her closing remarks, she said, you know, you've got to seek the truth. And she encouraged the the entire audience there. I don't know, there are over 1,000 people there. She said, be sure and listen to Joey Hudson and Just the Truth every morning. And, And that's what we have to do to build our community here because we got a lot of work to do between now and November. Hope you'll plan to join us tomorrow. Until then, remember, folks, God's got this. He's still in control.